everybody. Welcome back to Fun Facts with Faith. Today's fun fact is for Sharon because it was her birthday yesterday. Um, so it's about Star Trek. So today, Star Trek is, I mean, really a science fiction phenomenon. There are multiple TV series, movies, merchandise, dedicated conventions, a truly terrifying amount of fan fiction. Um, but for a minute there, it really was at risk of not surviving. Um, and not everybody knows how close it came to just completely fizzling out in its first series. So the original series of Star Trek, which aired on NBC in the 60s, um, did not do super well ratings wise. And NBC was also not a very big fan of the producer Gene Roddenberry um, and his sort of unrelenting envelope pushing in terms of scripts and content and theme. Um, and so, you know, as the second season was being filmed, it became pretty clear that NBC was planning to cancel. Actually, in fact, there had been talk of canceling it after the first uh, season, and Gene was successful in convincing science fiction writer Harlan Ellison to write some letters um, and to recruit some other science fiction authors to write some letters to the studio um, because Star Trek was one of the few shows at the time that purchased scripts from actual science fiction writers. Anyway. So it was already sort of off to a rocky start, and then the second season was happening, and, and Macy was like, really going to cancel it. Enter a very influential fan couple, Betty Jo, or B. Jo, and John Trimble. So B. Jo and John had been involved in science fiction fandom for a while. Um, in 1966, they were involved in planning Tricon, specifically the art show. Um, but a friend of theirs who was supposed to be handling the futuristic fashion show got sick, and so B. Jo ended up taking that on. And when she got there, um, the convention committee told her they'd promised this Hollywood producer that he could include um, three costumes from his TV show and the fashion show, and she was like, no, we don't have time for this. Like, I, I don't know. Nobody had heard of this show. It hadn't even premiered yet. They were like, what the heck is this? Um, but Gene managed to convince her, because that's who it was. It was Gene Roddenberry. Um, and so the, sh the fashion show included three costumes from the soon to premiere Star Trek. Um, and more importantly, Jean, uh, B. Joe, and John became friends. So that was how B. Joe and John came to be on the set, like visiting the Star Trek set in season two during filming. Um, and they, that's how they found out about the impending cancellation. But they were not willing to let Star Trek die. So they organized a letter writing campaign. Um, this was before the internet, right? So like, how are you gonna communicate with a bunch of people? How are you gonna find people and get the word out about this? Um, so, you know, they collected addresses from science fiction conventions, from book dealers. Um, Gene Roddenberry like raided the Star Trek fan mail that had been sent to the studio for addresses. Um, and they made these like newsletters that had instructions on how to write a letter and mailed them out to these addresses and included a request to pass the information on um, to at least 10 other people. So it was like, a, it was like an old fashioned chain letter. Um, and they also you know, were helped along by this existing network of um, fanzines. So fanzines are independent homemade magazines, like hand handmade at the time, because again, no computers, no printers, no internet, no nothing. Like they, they were like mimeographed. Um, but there were these networks of fans who would create and distribute these fanzines. Uh, the first and the probably best known of these for Star Trek specifically was called um, Spockanalia, and it ran for five issues in between 1967 and 1970. It was edited by two women, um, Deborah Langsam and Sherna Comerford, um, and it included all kinds of things like analytical essays, um, articles about the show, um, analysis of you know aspects of it, art, um, and to make this art, by the way, like they used to take because like you didn't have models to draw from, like they didn't have pictures. So what they would do is like, Jean would take um, 
like scraps of film that had been cut and was going to be thrown out. And then they would use those as stills to like draw from, which is amazing. I mean, really, if nothing else, this shows how significant it was that, you know, the, the creator, the creative team and the fans of this show had such a tight working relationship. Anyway, um, art, uh, fan fiction, um, and Spockanalia and Star Trek fandom in general and fan fiction had absolutely a huge influence on the future of science fiction fandom and the fan fiction. And it's a little bit too nerdy for this video, but if you um, are curious, you can ask me in person. Anyway, back to the story. So B. Joe and John have organized this letter writing campaign and what happens? Well, it was wildly successful. Um, there are many different accounts of how many letters they got anywhere from 12,000 to uh, 1 million. Um, probably the real number is somewhere around 100,000. I don't know. But regardless, it was successful enough that NBC did renew Star Trek for a third season and they actually went on air to make an announcement to say, Star Trek is not canceled, please stop writing us letters. So Star Trek was saved, yay, for one more season. Um, they did renew Star Trek for a third season. Gene Roddenberry was removed as the producer. Um, it's generally agreed, now I, I haven't watched the original series, but I hear that it's generally agreed that it is not as good as the other ones. Um, and so anyway, it was canceled at the end of the third series, very sad. But something very, very important had happened. By saving it long enough to get a third series, they had made it possible for Star Trek to enter syndication, i.e. reruns. So it was in syndication that Star Trek really found its following. I mean, it had a very devoted network of fans prior, but when it sort of reached widespread appeal was in syndication. Um, and so without syndication, it would not have gone on to have more series, it would not have had the movies, it would not be sort of the, the phenomenon that it is today. Um, and that is thanks to um, a large number of very devoted fans um, and to Gene Ronberry's um, interactions with them. But um, very particularly, it's due to the important influence of several women in the Star Trek fandom. And I think that's pretty cool. So um, happy birthday, Sharon. And um, come back tomorrow for more fun facts. Bye. <laughs>